about fishing that little bit of optimism at the start of the day so it's um a half five start today heading down to a little mark called hollywell uh, you can probably figure out i've got the float gear there are better ways of float fishing than these big cigar floats of course you can see it's got these little paths down from the main road, Eastbourne basically. And we're looking west towards Beachy Head. There's a nice little reef out there. So what I thought I'd do is just try and catch the last of the ebb here, float fish the prawn out, trying to find some gaps in the rocks where the fish are filtered out through the uh, ebbing tide. Very, very peaceful. Someone lure fishing down there already. here down in this weed. It's certainly going to be mullet here. Just about to see we've got the live prawn on. Up to about my knees. So no success at Hollywell, uh, but the tide was just on low and we moved further west down to Cow Gap. and then onto the ledge. Well, the goal is bass. So you can see why we've come to a place like this. It's a beautiful morning. And the idea is obviously to get bass. Look at the water conditions there. Yeah, it could be a little bit cloudy to be honest. So maybe these prawns will come into their own as opposed to the lures. Summer's, summer's certainly started. like this feeling of anticipation before you start fishing a couple of hours in and you haven't caught anything it's a bit different but <laughs> we haven't cast yet so this is just really trying to keep that line reasonably high uh, so it doesn't snag on the on the rocks in front of me using the budget rod here you notice the difference compared to a decent lure rod but this is the float that's on here as the fish work up and down the tide really a case of finding your own spot here you can walk for miles just be careful not to be cut off by these big tides And can fish water clarity is a lot better inside some of these pools and uh, gullies and it will hold fish and worth looking out for them this is the pachenko 
surface lure. Normally start off with a surface lure just to see if it gets any follows. You can really work the ground well. Easy to cast. Cast a mile as well, these 120 ones. I always think it's worth just letting it... I always wonder whether that initial splash as well attracts a fish. It's always worth just leaving it on the surface before you start the retrieve. Stop and start. And do live here, another good shallow water lure. You can retrieve it a little bit slower as well. Handy on these snaggy, snaggy marks here. got to be quite mobile only about five or six casts and it's time to move on again uh, it's rapid the way this tide comes in float drift out with the tide so the tide although the tide's coming in it's flowing out of this uh, little lagoon sort of place and there'll be a point where that float will start coming back the other way um, it's flowing out or it's floating that way because of the wind so the winds across my back and it's floating out so my theory is that between those two between the two sort of is a good little ambush point for the bass and I'm not entirely happy with that water clarity you can just see off in the distance there how it um, it's like two two tone colors fish will still see that prawn uh, in a moment that float's going to be a long way away from me though. <laughs> It'll be hard to bring a fish back in against wind and tide. Quickly, this fills up. Really got to watch behind you. <laughs> um, of course, these are big spring tides now, some of the biggest of the year, so just being really careful not to be cut off. Also, careful not to lose some camera gear off the rocks. So, the way I'm doing it now, working on the basis that during the early part of the flooding tide, which is what we've got. So during this early part of the flood, which is what we've got now, um, I imagine they're pushing through the rocks, waiting for things to be knocked out of the rocks when the surf comes in there, when the waves dislodge all the prawns and stuff. So we've got live prawns on. I'll stop using those in a minute about midway up and then we'll go on to the lures, theory being that they'll chase bait fish over the top of the reef. It's all theory. <laughs> if the fish aren't there, then the fish aren't there. Ah. 
Well, that was a lot of effort <laughs> for just one fish. Sometimes fishing is a bit more than just catching fish, isn't it? Uh, which is lucky today, really. Um, we come to somewhere like this and some amazing coastline in this country. It's something that on the south coast of England, uh, all you need to do is a short walk and you can be with this magnificent scenery. Um, so I hope you follow this journey on the channel because I'm hoping I'm going to catch bigger fish. <laughs> I'm hoping that I won't be travelling all this way just to catch one small schoolie. But you never know with fishing, you never know quite what's around the corner. Uh, so please subscribe and hopefully I'll have something a little bit more substantial uh, to film me catching next time. I've certainly got into the fishing recently now the summer months are here. Uh, have you been fishing? Are you out there trying to catch? Uh, I'm presuming you're doing better than me at the moment with just the two small bass on the last vlogs. Uh, but thanks very much for watching and please do subscribe and I'll keep you up to date uh, with what's being caught along this coastline anyway. Mm -hmm.